This is a picture test in practical histology of the gastrointestinal tract. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, pause the video at the beginning of each slide and take your time in reading the question and coming up with the answer, then replay the video to confirm your answer and listen to further comments and explanations. Which nerve plexus is located in this layer? Which nerve is the source of the parasympathetic fibers in this part of the gut? First of all, let's identify the section. The section shows features of the small intestine, where the mucosal surface is made up of numerous finger-like projections, the villi, characteristic feature of this small intestine, and the mucosa in between the villi is uh, formed into crypts. The deeper part of the mucosa here, this is the muscularis mucosa, and the next layer of the wall of the gut, deep to the mucosa, is the submucosa. And as you can see it here, it extends between the muscularis mucosa and the muscularis externa or the muscularis propria. In this part of the gut, the submucosa contains mucus secreting glands. These are the Brunner's glands, the characteristic feature of the duodenum. So this section belongs to the duodenum. It has villi, so it's a small intestine. It has Brunner's glands in the submucosa, so it is the duodenum. In the GI tract, autonomic plexuses are present in two places. They are present in the submucosa, as well as they are present in between the two layers of the muscularis externa. The submucosal plexus is called the basinal plexus, and it is located, as I mentioned, in the submucosa, which is indicated in this slide. And this supplies the mucosal glands, like the ones that are present here in the duodenum, as well as the smooth muscles of the muscularis mucosa. Now, since this section belongs to the duodenum, then the parasympathetic innervation to this plexus is provided by the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve supplies derivatives of the foregut and of the midgut with parasympathetic fibers. The hindgut, which extends from the distal third of the transverse colon to the upper part of the anal canal, they receive their innervation from the sacral parasympathetic outflow, S23, and four segments of the spinal cord. So because this is a section of the duodenum, then the source of the parasympathetic fibers in this part of the gut is the vagus nerve. What is the destination of contents of each of the tubes, A and B? This section shows part of the classical structural unit of the liver, the hepatic lobule. You can see cords of hepatic cells these are radially arranged around a central vein. So A represents a central vein or centrilobular venule. And as you can see that the vein is clearly lined by simple squamous epithelium. This is the endothelium that lines all the blood vessels. Uh, you can see that uh, these flattened cells, although their cytoplasm is not clear, but uh, the shape of the cell is reflected on the shape of the flattened nucleus. Now these central veins are tributaries of hepatic veins. Venous blood will come from a branch of the portal vein here in the portal triad, passes into the sinuses of the liver and empties into the central vein. The other source of blood comes from a branch of the hepatic artery. This is an arterial blood, again going into this sinusoids of the liver and emptying into the central vein. And these central veins will collect to form, ultimately they form three hepatic veins that open into the inferior uh, vena cava into, uh, that goes into the right atrium of the heart. So now the area where marker B is located at the lower left-hand corner of the photomicrograph it is the portal triad. You can see that there are multiple structures embedded in connective tissue. And as we have just mentioned, it's a, a branch of the portal vein, a branch of the hepatic artery. And the third profile that is marked by B is the bile ductule, a tributary of the bile duct. These triads also contain a lymphatic vessel, but because lymphatic vessels are very thin then, and small, then 
most of them are compressed. The vascular profiles, as we have seen here, and everywhere in the body, are lined by simple squamous epithelium, the endothelium. The artery is smaller and thicker in wall than the adjacent uh, portal vein, which is thinner and has is wider and has because it's thin it has a distorted shape unlike the artery which has a thicker wall and smooth muscle fibers and more elastic fibers and smooth muscle fibers are present in its wall so usually it appears as a circular profile not that much distorted like the vein the other circular profile which is marked as b is lined by simple cuboidal epithelium not an endothelium so it is not a blood vessel it is the other component of the portal triad and this is the bile duct and the contents of this are therefore destined to the extrahepatic biliary passages going to the duodenum which part of the gut tube is represented in this section in the higher magnification the photomicrograph on the right note that the epithelial lining of the mucosa is a simple columnar epithelium with goblet cells which are characterized by their almost empty cytoplasm and having the shape of a goblet and this is because of their their content of mucus is washed out during tissue preparation this is a typical mucosa of the intestine whether small intestine or large intestine in the lower magnification we can see clearly the finger-like projections of the mucosa the villi the characteristic feature the hallmark of the small intestine in addition to the villi which are the mucosal folds there are larger folds a larger fold is represented an entire fold is represented here in this inset on the left side and this fold as you can see is a mucosal and submucosal fold as well you can see the blue colored connective tissue of the submucosa is also included in the fold these folds which are called the plechi circularis or valvuli coniventis or circular folds or valves of kerkring all the same they further increase the surface area of absorption and they are large enough unlike the villi they are large enough to be noticed by the naked eye they are particularly numerous in the jejunum but uh, the given formation in this section cannot give a conclusive evidence that it is a jejunum so a small intestine would be an accepted answer here because we have no other uh, features to make sure whether this part of the small intestine is a duodenum, jejunum, or ileum. Now, given that this is a tangential section of mucosa of the small intestine, identify the cells A, what is their function, and identify the layer B. In a tangential section, the circular profiles, which have a lumen in the center, this is where the lumen is located, they represent tubular glands. So if the gland is a simple tubular gland has this shape, then a tangential section with the surface will make the profile circular with a lumen in the center. In the small intestine, they represent the crypts of the small intestine. Layer B is a region of connective tissue containing collagen fibers and fibroblasts. It is deep to the mucosa and it is the submucosa. The circular profiles being close to the submucosa, then they are showing the bottom of the tubular glands. The cells, like the one marked A, is a paneth cell. And these are characteristically located at the base of the crypts. They have a prominent eosinophilic apical granules on their cytoplasm. These granules contain an antimicrobial enzymes that provide line of defense against microbes that pass through the stomach identify the space at the tip of the pointer in a and identify the cell b what is the special feature shown in this specific cell this is a section showing the classical structural unit of the liver the hepatic lobule there is a centrilobular venule central vein a tributary of the hepatic vein this is usually located in the center of the lobule and uh, we can see that the hepatocytes they form plates or hepatic cords that radiate around the central vein in between the cords are sinusoids so these are white vascular spaces white capillaries 
marge in A, and as you can see that they are lined by endothelium, simple squamous epithelium, uh, represented by the flat cells here. The cell B is part of the cord, of the hepatic cord, that radiates away from the central vein and is located in between sinusoids. It's a hepatocyte. And as you can see that hepatocytes, not necessarily this one, but all the other hepatocytes, they are large polyhedral cells with a round centrally placed nucleus. The cytoplasm is darkly stained because they have numerous organelles. The specific feature of this cell, which we can see in B, this hepatocyte, is that it is binucleated. And this is a common feature of hepatocytes in a normal liver. You can see here that there is, for example, another binucleated cell, hepatocyte. List two functions of the lining epithelium. Would you expect to find paneth cells in this section, in this part of the gut? The epithelium here is a simple columnar epithelium with multiple mucus secreting goblet cells. There are no villi, thus it's not a small intestine. Small intestine is characterized by the presence of villi, finger-like projections. Now this section has no villi, but it has crypts, and so it is the large intestine. The crypts are simple tubular glands that extend the whole length of the mucosa, and they are a feature of the, of the intestine in general. As you can see here, that most of the columnar cells are absorptive cells, the principal function is absorption of water and salt. But as the feces pass along the large intestine and become progressively dehydrated, the mucus becomes increasingly important in protecting the mucosa from trauma. And that's why we have an abundance of goblet cells here. So the epithelium here is absorptive of water and salts, and it is protective at the same time, which is reflected by the abundance of goblet cells. Going to the next part of the question, uh, would you expect to find paneth cells here in the, in the large intestine? Paneth cells are characteristically located at the base of the crypts of the small intestine. They are the cells that have prominent eosinophilic apical granules on their cytoplasm. They secrete enzymes that have antimicrobial uh, action. They are a feature of the small intestine, but a few of them may be found, may be found sporadically in the cecum or the appendix. For sure, this is not an appendix for reasons that will be described later, but this could be a section of the cecum. So there is a possibility that we might find paneth cells at the bottom of the crypts of this part of the small intestine, if this section is a cecum. Otherwise, Paneth cells are present in the small intestine. Identify the part of the gut represented in this section. Be specific. In this part of the gut, the epithelium is a simple columnar epithelium, no villi, so it's not a small intestine. At the same time, there are crypts, but these crypts are very few and they are short, but still they are present and can be seen. So this is part of the large intestine. In fact, it is the appendix. Now, in addition to the features that conform to that of the rest of the large intestine, that's the simple columnar epithelium, the presence of the crypts, you can see that uh, these crypts are um, fewer and shorter than... You can see here that the appendix has many lymphoid nodules in the wall, and these extend to the submucosa as well, and they also have some germinal centers. So this is a large intestine. To be specific, it is the appendix. It has fewer and shorter crypts than the rest of the large intestine, and it has multiple lymphoid follicles in the mucosa and the submucosa.